Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in this video, this is, you know, bear with me. This is something I've never really done before on topics and different things that, um, but this is something that we really need to talk about. And I am asking for as much help as anybody can give. Um, we don't have it set up just yet, but there will be a FundMe account set up to help this person. And let me explain what's going on. Our, many of us, we know of Rachel Reinstra. And we, we know of her as a charismatic, wonderful, sweet girl, sweet lady. Um, I've known her for a few years now, and I've known her to help a lot of people just out of the kindness of her heart and ask for nothing in return. But now she needs our help. And not just Rachel, but many victims throughout this country. And what I'm talking about is the victimhood of domestic violence. We hear about it all the time and it, it's a shame for what has happened and what does happen to a lot of these these people and if it be male or female it happens on both sides of the spectrum. Rachel was brutally beaten and I know that everybody's knee-jerk reaction is immediately lash out in hatred for the offender, for the person that did this. But you see, when we do that, we are feeding the very evil in the world. It's not about pushing hatred for this person that done this offense, but forgiveness. God asks us to love our enemies and that's exactly what we need to do we need to understand that it is the system that has been created in America that allows the victim to be victimized by government by hospitals by police you know law enforcement agencies and even the general public. And what do I mean by that? Our mutual friend, Max Egan, put out a video when he heard about it. I had um, talked to him and a few others had, and he heard what had happened, and he put out a video now on telegram it was unbelievable the mentality of people i even saw comments of people that thinking they are so great that how dare max even talk about something like that this is not the platform for that well if a platform where you get information and you communicate with people is not the right platform, then what is? People are so self-centered today that it, it's sad. It, it truly is. But this video that he put out, he did talk a little bit, this last video of his, and he talked a little bit about why he was so angry that this had happened and what's going on and that is everybody's first reaction they are very angry at the person that did this but we have to take the focus off our anger and hatred for the person that did this and look at the reason for number one why it happened number two why does it continue to happen why are tens of millions of dollars spent every year and nothing ever changes and that's the thing when you turn from the offender and you do not push hatred for that offender then that offender gets no fame no fortune no nothing 
and they will live, as Rachel had put it, in their own self-made hell for the rest of their lives. This man that did this to her, she was in love with him, and she still is in love with this man. And she has known this man for a good six years. But an evil side of him came out. And why does this evil live within people? Because this is the earth we live in today. And this is what society has created. I can tell you right now, and I know, I hear it all the time, listening to the scanner. I have a scanner, I have the frequencies, I listen to multiple, multiple fire and rescue stations and multiple law enforcement agencies. I have heard time and time again the politics of it all is propaganda and that's all it is. They want you to believe that if you put a restraining order against somebody then you're safe. Well you're not. A piece of paper keeps nobody safe ever. I have heard numerous times of a, a domestic disturbance and law enforcement gets there and lo and behold the wife or girlfriend has a restraining order against the boyfriend or the husband and the husband has a restraining order against the girlfriend or the wife and oh guess what what are they still doing in the same apartment that piece of paper according to our corrupt politicians and our corrupt government of today, well, they're not supposed to be because they have a restraining order. Well, brutally beating somebody to the point of blinding them in one eye and shattering their nose. Shattering it. It'll take a long time to fix all this if she ever has sight in her eye ever again. And this is what disturbs me the most is they don't care. They want you to believe every time they want millions and millions of more money to combat this. They want you to believe that they are doing everything to keep people safe. But no. Do you know that the millions of dollars that go into safe houses and help programs is not to help the victim. It is to make the victim a victim for life. Why should, <clears throat> excuse me, why should a victim have to go hide in some shelter somewhere and be in fear and anxiety. But that's what they want. They need those statistics. They need those statistics, number one, for more funding and more money. So it's not about helping the victim. So here, what I'm saying is the victim, why is the victim have to give up their entire life when they are a victim of a brutal crime? And we see that time and time and time again, that it is the victim of many different kinds of atrocities that are done to people. It is the victim who is drugged through the cleaners. It is the victim who is blamed. It is the victim who is made to be a victim for the rest of their lives. They can't get back to any form of normalcy because these programs will not allow it. If we cure you and help you, then we lose our funding. But yet the perpetrator of these atrocities, they still have their freedom. And don't get me wrong, this is not to push hatred onto anybody. They need help. That they do. But that help is taken away because they do not want these perpetrators to be helped. They do not want these 
perpetrators to be incarcerated and their freedom and their life destroyed. Which, that should be it. Take this perpetrator that pounded and brutally beat Rachel. Let him spend the next three to four years in a prison. We're going to take your freedom away. You're going to learn to control your anger and your violence and your outburst. Or you will not have your freedom. You do not deserve it because you are now a threat to society. This person needs all of his welfare and everything. This person needs this stuff taken away. Because you know what I have seen over the years? And it breaks my heart to see it. The victim is victimized by these programs and by the hospitals and by law enforcement and by the government to the point where they commit suicide. Because they are driven right over the edge by the very people that are paid to help them. This, uh, these atrocities, this has to stop. The next time a politician is babbling on about they need, want millions and millions of dollars to combat this, you tell them to go pound sand because they have already destroyed the help system. When this happened, I didn't know the laws in Arizona, but boy, I do now. And the victim has no rights at all. None. But the offender, the perpetrator of these brutal attacks, have all the rights in the world. Their life is not hindered in any way, shape, or form, but the victim's is. What's wrong with this system? We need to hold these people accountable. If we have to start doing it ourselves, if we have to go to, you know, well, let me back up. This, this perpetrator, this offender, he is from another country. And that's the worst part of it all. England will never do nothing to this man. Nothing. And sadly, the Arizona court system will basically do nothing at all. When this first happened and she spent the night in the hospital and she's being informed of the extensive damage done to her face and her head is that she's going to be a victim for the rest of her life and they're going to see it. See to it. They're going to make sure that she has to look over her shoulder and she is scared to death and she lives in fear now and th there's no healing process because they don't want that. He was right back out on the street before she was even let out of the hospital. Just to learn at later dates that it's going to be a long, expensive reconstruction of that of her nose and possibly blindness how can somebody blind another human being and still have their freedom I understand Rachel the kindness of her and she's put her faith and she's always had her faith in God that God will see her through this and I'm even asking you no ill will towards the man using evil against evil will only get you more evil rise above it is it so hard to pray for this guy that he can heal himself and never lay a hand on another human being for the rest of his life? Is, is that so hard? Or are we driven to such evil and hatred within our hearts today that we just want him destroyed? In which that's what the government should be doing anyway in the first place. is not really destroying him, but taking away his freedom 
for a good period of time. Letting his employ, employer know that he is now a threat. And for those that are already in the system, maybe they need to take their, have their welfare and their help taken away from them. You don't deserve taxpayer-funded welfare and housing and food stamps. You, you don't need that, no. Because you abuse that. You ab abused the privilege of having this stuff given to you for nothing. That's where, you know, so that maybe later on down the road, and, it, and it's, it's hard to say, and I, I don't want to say it, but it needs to be said, that the victim will not be committing suicide. Because the mental stress that the programs and the courts and the hospitals and everything put on the victim and not the offender, they commit suicide. They get driven over the edge. But let the offender take it to their grave. Make it harder for them to survive in a world where stability needs to be the answer. So please what I'm asking is any way you can help and do, do you know of public officials? Do you know of even within the federal level of people that work that can get with and hold Arizona accountable? for what the state government of Arizona has created. And it's in all 50 states. I live in Maine. And I see the same thing here every day. I hear it. Restraining orders, and the people are living together still. A woman is beaten almost to death by her husband but her husband's right back there pounding on the door. So the piece of paper does nothing. The threat of being incarcerated does nothing because they're not incarcerated. They get picked up, they go to jail, the next day they're back out on the street. They get picked up again, they go back to jail, and the following day they're back on the street. But yet, you know what the state of Maine does? The state of Maine uses this to take people's rights away, even the victim's rights. The victim is now under extreme mental stress, so we have to take the rights of this person to own a firearm. And the offender, oh well, we're going to take the, the offender's right to own a firearm. Well, the person's already a criminal, and already proven that he has no, him or her, have no respect for other human beings. So if they want to get their hands on a firearm, they will, regardless of what the law is. Laws are not put on the books for criminals. They're put on the books for the honest, law-abiding citizen. I would hate to think that in America today, we have to start taking the law into our own hands to protect the victims so that they can live their lives not in fear and the mental stress put onto them by the very system that was created to protect them. There was no protection. None. I am glad to hear and learn of now that some of Rachel's friends that could and had the means got there to be with her and protect her and watch over her and help her. And I'm sure mentally Rachel will heal. Physically, it's too early to tell. But I am working with another mutual friend of Rachel's and we've got to get a GoFundMe account set up. You can check back to my channel, and when we do get this set up, 
I will do another video and I will put the link in this video and I will be putting it on all of my platforms and I will ask anybody that has a channel or a, you know a small following or fan base or whatever to help out and to spread the word because why should the victim be victimized even more the the cost the cost of the medical procedures is going to be astronomical she had a small business started that was she was sustaining her life now she can't even do this job she can't even run her business because of the damage right now that has been done not only to her but to the vehicle that she used so the vehicle needs to be repaired Rachel needs to be repaired at the same time she needs to live she didn't deserve this nobody I don't care what you think of anybody in this world but nobody deserves this to happen to them nobody and it's time that we start demanding if not doing it ourselves that these offenders are held accountable and these offenders lives are not so easy for them anymore because I am so sick and tired of seeing the victims of these atrocities be the only one vilified and destroyed no victim deserves to be incarcerated in a so-called safe house it's a safe house come here and feel comfortable and and be safe well all day long the only thing these people and these programs and these safe houses do that work in there is they keep the victim in fear and they they don't help with the mental stress that the person is going through they amplify it because all they care about is money 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 give us that funding give us that funding we need these statistics we need when we go before the politicians we need to show that these these people and and these victims they, they're just not getting better well of course not because there's nothing you're doing in this program that's making them get better because the more that their life is taken from them and their freedom is taken from them at the hands of somebody else and all you keep doing is oh here I'll give you a hug today everything's gonna be fine how do you feel today how is this affecting you and what you don't realize is that is not what a person needs a person needs to get back to normalcy needs to not be afraid when they walk out the door they don't have to look over their shoulder they don't have to be so afraid that this offender that is not having anything done to them can come right up and take their life and yes it has happened many many thousands of times the piece of paper does nothing and the offender is so irate that they can't be around the person they're abusing that they do usually end up killing them oh and that's even worse because that's even more propaganda for the government and even more oppression against the innocent from the government we have to realize that God is in control let God heal you let God guide you in what to do is right these domestic violence offenders the these people they they need to be exposed for what they are and who they are make their life harder not the victims I I've, I will end it here before I get way too 
emotionally ticked off. But we need God more than ever. For the evil in this world that when when you don't have a guiding principle and you don't have a guiding values that is taught within the Bible and through God and through the Savior Jesus Christ, then this is what happens. You have no remorse. You have no guilt. You have no respect. You could not care less because you're so self-centered. That's what happens. But I ask all of you, pray for Rachel. And also pray that the offender within this atrocity gets the help that he needs so that he never ever lays a hand on another human being especially one that he proclaims that he loves and the one that loves him has to tolerate so until the next video God willing this is no way out.